Hello friends, this video on integers part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have learned about operations on integers, it is time to talk about properties of integers. Now integers also follow a lot of properties and we will see how these properties are going to help us. Now some of the properties that we will discuss for integers are closure property, commutative property, associative property, distributive property. And I am pretty sure that these names are no more new to you. You have learned about these properties for whole numbers in your previous class. So this time we will learn about the same properties but for integers. So let's start with closure property. So what is closure property? It talks about uh, the fact what happens when we add integers. Do we always get integers or sometimes we also get numbers which are not integers. So let us add and see. So let's randomly pick up any integer. Let's say minus 1 is an integer plus 15 is another integer. So this is 14. You add minus 3 to 61. What do you get? You get 58. You add 0 to minus 10. What do you get? You get minus 10. You add minus 10 to minus 3. What do you get? You again get minus 13. So in each of these, what do you see? Whether you whether, whether we take positive and negative integer or we take positive positive or negative negative or zero with some positive or negative integer, every time we get an integer. So every time the result is an integer. So this proves that integers are closed under addition. So when you add integers, you always get integers. Any two integers added will give you an integer. This is called closure property. Closure comes from the word closed. That means integers are closed. So integers, they have a house of their own where only the integers reside. So all the integers live inside this house. And as far as addition is concerned, integers remain closed within their house. That is only integers will be involved in addition of integers. So for any two integers a and b, a plus b is always an integer. Now let us look at the same closure property for subtraction of integers. So let us try to subtract a few integers. So 1 minus 15, this gives minus 14. 0 minus minus 4, you get 4. 4 minus minus 3, what do you get? You get 7. 5 minus minus 5, you get 10. Minus 15 minus minus 2, you get minus 13. Minus 15 minus 3, you get minus 18. So here again, I have taken a lot of different combinations. Somewhere I have taken both negative integers, somewhere one positive, one negative, somewhere one negative, one positive and so on. Then every time again, we observe that the result is an integer. Is it so? So do you see that every time you get an integer, so what do we observe in each of these examples? We see that every time we subtract two integers, we get another integer. So that ways, can we say that integers are closed under subtraction? So whatever is written on the screen is definitely not correct. So integers are also closed under subtraction. So these are different from whole numbers. Now when you had learned about the same property for whole numbers, you had seen that whole numbers were not closed under subtraction. But integers, they are closed under subtraction. So if you have any two integers, a and b, a minus b will always be an integer. So let us talk about the next property that is commutative property. So what is commutative property? By now all of you know what is commutative property. Looking at the pictures, do you recall anything about commutative property? So here what we do, we just interchange the position of the integers. So let's take an example. So let's add two integers. So we take two integers 5 and minus 3. So let us add these two integers. So 5 plus minus 3 would be equal to 2. Now let us interchange the position of these integers. That is we write minus 3 first and then we write 5. So minus 3 plus 5. 
So what is the result? So here also we get the same result. So therefore, what do we conclude? 5 plus minus 3 is the same thing as minus 3 plus 5. It is just that we are changing the order in which the integers are being placed. Now, so this was one example. Let us take another example. Let us take two integers, minus 2 and minus 16. So if you add minus 2 to minus 16, what do you get? You get minus 18. Now let us say if we change the position that is minus 16 plus minus 2, what do you get? In this you get minus 18 again. So from here also you see that minus 2 plus minus 16 is the same thing as minus 16 plus minus 2. So basically what does this prove? This proves that if you have any two integers a and b, then a plus b is always equal to b plus a. So this picture also tries to tell the same thing. If this is e, a and this is b, then a plus b is the same as b plus a. So we say that addition of integers is commutative. This property is called commutative property. So for any two integers a and b, a plus b is equal to b plus a. Now let us look at the commutative property for subtraction of integers. So for this again let us take example. So let us consider two integers 5 and minus 3. So if you subtract 5 minus minus 3, what is it? This becomes equal to 5 plus 3. Like subtracting a number means adding its additive inverse. That's what we have learned, right? So this is 8. Now let us say if we try to change the position of the integer. So this becomes minus 3 minus 5. So in this case, what happens? So you see that the order of the digits have changed and therefore your calculation has also changed because this time you are subtracting 5 from minus 3. So this would actually mean minus 3 plus minus 5. So you are basically adding these two numbers. So this would be equal to minus 8. So what do you observe? You observe that 5 minus minus 3 is not equal to minus 3 minus 5. That means the result changes the moment you change the order or change the position of the digits in case of subtraction. Now let us take another example if you think that okay how can I rely on one example. So let's take another example. So minus 2 minus minus 16. So this is equal to minus 2 plus 16 which is equal to 14. Now let's reverse the position of the digit. So this becomes minus 16 minus minus 2 which is equal to minus 16 plus 2 which is equal to minus 14. So here again we see that minus 2 minus minus 16 is not equal to minus 16 minus minus 2. So now with these examples, we can very clearly say that subtraction is not commutative. So for any two integers a and b, a minus b is never equal to b minus a. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.